Why is emotional agility important? Well, when we are aware of our emotions, it allows us to be able to understand our thoughts, actions, and behaviors. It is a way of somewhat in and of itself having the ability to collect, collect data on the internal mental and emotional experience. So then the attributes of what's going on within the data inside then is how it contributes in the physical form, the relational form, the, the health and logistical outcome of what's going on. So it's really about, okay, here I'm experiencing this. What is the data of the thought, the action, the behavior? And to not necessarily um, invalidate the emotions. It's not having the agility to mask or push down or not experience the emotion. It's the, it's the agility and the practice of being able to understand, oh, okay, this is how I'm feeling, this is what I'm thinking, this is how I'm reacting, and these are the behaviors and the outcome that's going to um, create an experience for me based on how it is I'm feeling and what it is I'm thinking. That being said, it is also the way in which we then can manage our thoughts and feelings. It's not about being dominated by them by any means and or overcoming and suppressing them. It's about being able to navigate through an experience, through a conflict and a situation while just merely being able to recognize, oh, okay, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. This is where it's coming from. Um, there are four practices that have been proven to be really, really effective when it comes to building your emotional agility. And they are obviously step one is recognizing the patterns. Um, being able to become aware of what you're hooking onto or attaching to is step one of the process. Then you want to label your emotion. What meaning is it? What does it look like? Get it physical, make it a, an adjective. And then step three is to accept it. Week, uh, step four, week four. Step four is then to act on your value. So you recognize your patterns, you label your thought or emotion, you accept it for what it is, and then you act on your values, not on the, the wrath that the um, thought or emotion is having. There's also a few pointers that I wanted to make sure I touch on in case that just is like not a tangible enough process, which is a take a look at your the impact of your emotions. Even like the, the the intense emotions are not all bad. In fact, when we experience emotions like anger in a very intense way shape or form, it's usually because something is feeling like injustice to us or that there's a there's a fear or stress response of some sort of moral or ethical compass that's a little off. So don't think of being angry as a bad thing just because it's one of those intense emotions. Um, aim for regulation, not repression. This is about allowing your feelings and emotions to be part of who you are, part of what you communicate, and that in which you can easily articulate and receive from others without being attached to it. Um, identifying what you're feeling, accepting your emotions, all of them. Uh, some people like to keep a mood journal, like when they wake up, they write how they're feeling. And then at the end of the day, they recap, oh, okay, if I had to label this day with one emotion, this is how, this is how I'm feeling. Um, Breath work, meditation to help regulate um, is a great practice to be able to be enhancing and increasing your emotional agility. Um, taking space, giving yourself some space. I know like last month I talked about the four um, defense mechanism strategies and like fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Flight if used effectively, can be very helpful in the whole regulation, articulation process of your emotional agility. So don't fully discredit and think that it's a terrible me method because when we are, are experiencing um, uncomfortable emotions, it is often necessary that we give ourselves some time and space. So those are just a couple pointers that are gonna reiterate 
the ability and start getting you in the practice and wheel realm of how to increase your emotional agility. And again, why do we want to increase our emotional agility? Because it allows you to become aware of your thoughts, actions, and behaviors while not invalidating who you are and what you're feeling and not um, suppressing it, but rather the ability to collect data so that at the end of the day, you can create longer lasting, more respectful, um, deeper connected and intimate relationships. So I hope this video is valuable and we will see you next week.